How's it going? This is Cole Rolf, and welcome back to Hammer Ting! So, this time I set up some food over here, some new food. I uh, took a look at things. We're gonna make some roast meat and some lichen soup. We've still got crab broth, uh, but that's mainly just to complete this quest, uh, this quest over here. Um, it's it's okay, restores health, but those crab shells are so hard to find, it seems. We can't seem to locate any, so I'm not going to bother too, too much about it. We've got other other things that'll make us food as well and restore health, so that'll be good. But yeah, we've got a bunch of mines set up. We've got a mithril mine, or a heavy metal mine, or or a chalcum mine. And got it hooked up to the rail. Wonderful, one big giant connect system. That's awesome. Yeah, there goes a little cart on its own. It can pick up stuff. It's like a, a hauling dwarf. Yep, and drop stuff off right to here. Look at that. We actually need to do stuff with this. <laughs> We've got tons and tons of material that we're not really doing too much with. So another thing we were looking at last time was uh, whitesmithing and gem production. I guess I should look in here. So we do have uh, some emeralds. And I took a quick look just to make sure that um, processing the gems in this way actually um, makes higher value gems. And it does. Um, so this raw sapphire is 1 silver, 80 copper. And do we have any processed? We have rough emerald. Yeah. So assuming, and I'm fairly certain they're all the same, there isn't any value difference between sapphires and emeralds and rubies and things like that. So, you know, it takes it takes three to make a rough gem, three raw to make a rough, and if these are worth basically just shy of two silver each, three of them together would be worth just shy of uh, six silver, and the rough emerald is worth nine silver. So okay, so it's gone up in value. Oh, there's a there's a raw emerald. Yeah, it's the same price. So there. So there we go. Um, and same thing with Cabron. In order to go up a tier, you need three of the previous tier. For some reason, I don't know how exactly that works. You know, <laughs> a gem rounded to perfection. Oh, now we're cutting in facets. Now we're cutting in different facets. That's not really how whitesmithing works but whatever it's fine it's fine it makes sense in game <laughs> so it does yeah so there that's worth 30 and the raw was worth nine so three of those would be worth 27 silver so a slight net increase and yeah same again for the trillion net increase do we have um any brilliant gems yet oh yeah there we go yeah, so that one's worth two gold, just shy of three gold. So it's it does it it does slightly increase their value. Let's take a look and see how this works out on the overworld. So, yeah, <laughs> here's our brilliant emerald. It's only gonna sell for eighty silver. Um, kinda unfortunate, really. It's not worth a whole lot. Now, one thing I've noticed as I was poking around, increasing your standing to increase our their opinion of us, we actually uh, use trade lore. You just kind of click on it, and, and off you go, and it'll increase. So that's that's kind of interesting. So that's how that that works, because I was noticing we've got so much trade lore, and really, with just trading, it's not hard to to come by, really. Um, looking at the elves here, they will buy our brilliant gem for a little bit more. You know, definitely it's worthwhile poking around to see who will buy stuff at a higher price. So that is good. But, um, yeah, that makes it, it makes sense why we're getting so much trade lore now. It's like, okay, you're supposed to be spending it on the factions, increasing standing with them. So I might take a look at that in a little bit. I uh, just want to see our dwarves are idle. One of the big things we want to do this this time around is uh, keep digging deeper. 
because really we found all the biomes and well all the biomes except for the fiery underworld so we should keep going down 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 because that's where you find that we've actually <laughs> in a way although it looks like we've gone a long ways we haven't this is only a normal size map and we can just keep going down and down 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 so we got a lot of work to do there we're just probably going to focus on uh, just digging downward as opposed to going out to the side. I guess Jarby has gone over here to work the jackpot mine. Oh, and he got a bit of coal. Sometimes they don't yield very much. Sometimes they can give you pretty pretty cool things, but usually it's just coal. You know. Well, just been looking through things in the base here and noticed a couple of interesting things. We've got a ton of iron ingots. And what is actually happening <laughs> is we're using up our iron right away. So this this foundry isn't operating because it's set to just do 20 in the mountain home. Okay, fine. We've got 228. All right. As you can see, we are making iron right away because this is trying to fill this inventory uh, up to 60. Okay. But the system is taking it out of here and sending it up. So all the process, all the mined iron is getting right away processed into iron ingots. And not that that's a bad thing per se, but unless we're actually using these ingots for something, it's, it's going to eventually clog our system. So, and, and really that's not quite how I wanted this to operate. Um, really, I'm thinking this should be... Oop, nope, had there. Uh, maintain in the mountain. Um, that way we're not using fuel excessively, we're not... Well, if we're not using it fast enough, then we're storing it as raw iron, hopefully in here, and, you know, storing a bit in here. So basically, if we're not using it fast enough, it, it'll just back up into the system as raw iron. And that's kind of a signal that we should be using it and doing something with it. So I think setting it up like this will make a little bit more sense. Now we'll just store it for a little while. It'll also mean that, well, with it being mountain home, we might as well set these two to the same number that we got down there. Otherwise... You know, one of them will process it. We could end up in a situation where we've got raw copper and iron up here, and it's getting sent all the way down here to be processed, and then sent all the way back up to be stored over here as ingots. So, yeah. Maybe what we'll do, let's just set this up to... We'll set them both to 100 everywhere. And I'll give it a little bit more thought if I'd want to change it around differently seems to be working but um yeah we really need to find uh or start using our iron and our copper to make things i mean we're using copper to make rails and good things like that but the iron really we don't have a use for it um because really we need to be using it for trade because we don't um we're not doing anything particular with it ourselves because we've we've moved on to better metals so what I, what I'm gonna do we've, we've been making copper uh, heavy pickaxes let's make some iron ones because we also noticed last time that even if something is better quality it may not sell for as much and I just want to double check that I think we found that we had some uh, we had some copper pickaxes that were selling more for iron. It might have been that they were just regular light pickaxes, not the heavy ones, and that's why. Not entirely sure. So we will check. Oh, we need to make some of this. Alright. Jarby, come on over here. Make a few of these, please. And then, uh, yeah, we'll set them up properly. We don't have straight uh, iron handles yet. Oh, we, we have. So there. There we go. So yeah, we'll do, we'll do this, uh, we're doing 10? Yeah, sure. Why not? We'll do 10. 
Okay, and another thing what I want to do is we are going to get rid of the small quarry. I put a foundation, a walkway underneath here. But uh, we're going to destroy this building. Can we do it from here? No, I don't think so. Okay. There we go. We're going to destroy it here, and we're going to put up a storage just for tools and stuff like that. Oh, we're still... we've got all our mining jobs here. Yeah, just shaving off this soil and stuff like that. There, set up a few more mining jobs just to kind of keep shaving this back. I find I kind of need to do this in stages. If I set the whole thing, odds are someone will mine through the half of it, then I end up needing to build scaffolding everywhere to actually... Uh, clear the rest of it out. So trying to do it stepwise, it's a lot more micromanagement though, but I don't know. If you guys know of a better way to do that, let me know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, the gems. So I realized uh, the way I set these gem orders up, um, what's happened is everything stopped because we've got... Um, we can't, we can't make any more. We've got, um, well, I'm not sure why we're not uh, grabbing more raw sapphires. Hmm. But the thing to do might be to just set up, um, instead of doing it like this, let's just do it for sapphires. And we'll do three because... I know I had it as six, and that's the way we've got some intermediaries, but that was so we could... I was trying to do um, emerald and sapphire at the same time, but I'm thinking... Let's just do it like this, and that way when we have enough of the previous tier, we'll just go up and make the next tier up. There we go. So we'll just do that. I should probably set this up for Emerald, too, then. There we go. Now we're working away at the whitesmithing again. There is a maximum number of jobs you can set up in the crafting queue. So if we find more gemstone deposits, we may... we might make another whitesmithing station. Alright, setting up our storage area there, and once that's built, we'll get all the tools over here. This be a little bit easier to kind of manage and figure out what's going on there. And then I think what we'll do is... We've still got our small tavern we haven't built yet. We could slap it down in here. and Or maybe just to the side. So we can put the scaffolding past it. And then... So it kind of lines up there. Okay. Because the other thing we could do... We could put our great hall, which would kind of be around here somewhere does mean that, you know, it fits along the base, but we're going to be digging into the in the ceiling a little bit. Uh, you know, might, uh, might clear out some area, some extra area up here. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Don't, um, if we put it like there, I don't think it'll be a big deal at all. I think it'll just fit in. But I thought that would be nice. You know, we need a tavern. And why not put it over here Right beside the Ting, the Great Hall. And that way, you know, the dwarves can have their meeting and then they go out and have a beer, because that just sounds very appropriate. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, looks like... Okay. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of impossible orders here, because, you know, they'll run out of gems and, and whatnot eventually, but... We're back to making... Wow, all that... Just to make one brilliant sapphire. Oh, we've got this set up. Let's set it up for... Yeah, all tools and weapons. And... Yeah, normal priority should be fine. And... Oh, wrong one. This one. Edit filter. Let's watch it vomit. <laughs> we come over here and I'll just... Think... Bleh. <laughs> How come all the weapons? Uh, it's awesome. Cool. Okay, well, we'll get that moved over, and uh, yeah, it'll just be a lot easier to see what uh, what tools we have available, what we've got made. 
And actually, that's a good reminder. We've made the iron pickaxes. So let's uh, let's head over here to a mine and say hello. Oh, okay, so yeah, it must have been the. Oh wait, here we. Go. Those are heavy metal. Yeah, isn't that weird? They're way more willing to to buy our copper heavy pickaxes as opposed to our iron ones. Three times the value. Huh. Yeah, you guys... Yeah, basically, you know, it's still worth a lot more. I mean, the sure, the, uh, the heavy metal ones are, are worth a lot more to them. But... Yeah. That's really weird. I wonder why that... I wonder if that's actually a bug. Um... Because a copper pickaxe should not be as good as an iron one. And shouldn't be as valuable to them. But, well, it's fine. We can work with this. Oh, selling to the highest bidder. I think you guys get them. There we go. And, um, yeah, I guess we'll we'll turn off that order. Because there's, um, there's not much point making them if, I mean... Sure, they, we sell them and and off we go. But it's not. Uh, maybe there's something else that we can do. All right. Well, let's come on down to our smithy here. And what should we make? Let's make some. Hmm. Maybe we should do it again. Let's make some iron. Yeah, we'll make five. We'll make some iron. Um. Falcons? Mm, sure, why not? We'll make some falcons, and we'll make some copper ones as well, and see how they like that. Well, as we're waiting for these to be processed and made, another thing I noticed as I was poking around, we can actually change where all these things are. This must have been in the latest uh, update. So yeah, we've got alerts, the dwarves, the uh, craft buildings. Actually, maybe... Let's turn that off. Oh yeah, and overworld missions. We can... Overworld locations and missions. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we probably don't need to see that. I do want to see missions. You know, if they do show up, I want to be alerted right away. But yeah, we can move the cave missions. Move to the right, move to the left. We can move all these things so you can... Also, you can order your overhead display, and you can actually set up that you want larger or smaller or whatnot. Um, it doesn't seem like you can actually make them smaller than that, but you can make them larger if you wanted to. That's pretty cool. Nice little improvements. Ah, dust to dust started. Okay, abandoned graveyard. Alright, I'll take a look at that in just a second. I just want to run around and, um, and see. Oh, look at that! The copper version is selling way more than the iron. That's so weird. Huh. I mean, the, sure, the Mithril one is, is selling for way more, but, you know, Mithril's awesome. Copper's just whatever. Huh. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Um, I should probably have checked to see where we should... where, you know, someone will offer us more, but... Meh. That's fine. Alright, let's take a look at... Oh, it's already disappeared should be down here oh wow oh yeah there it is there is the abandoned graveyard that's where we can get some skellies and restless bones oh that's right we got a new adventure so we need to destroy 11 more skeletons so I figured let's just blow this place up um, I don't know if it'll give us 11 actually it seems like uh yeah, I, I said this... Okay, everyone is coming. I'm like, dude, it's just one guy. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, under attack by skeleton and skeleton. Oh, there's more coming. Okay. Well, with our mithril weapons, we're not too worried. We need to craft five bone ash. Well, we've done that in the past. We don't really have a whole lot of use for bone ash anymore, but let's just have someone explore over here. 
And we're still mining. Okay. I did see that there's heavy metal in the wall there, but now that we've got a mine, it's not as critical, and especially for a small amount like that, it's not... We'll keep an eye on it, but I don't think it's going to be worth actually mining it out. There. Let's make five bone ash out of spider bones, complete that quest, and get a little bit more mountain lore, which is just stockpiling, and we're not really doing much with. <laughs> so let's take a look at the knowledge tree. What should we really get? Um, I'm, I was kind of thinking maybe we can get into the uh, various other beverages and foods. So let's see, what do we need for that? Probably expanded plantages. There we go. Let's get uh, careful distilling and whiskey. Lowland hospitality. Why not? We've got so much. We've got so much stuff. We should pretty much just clear off everything we can. Adapted hogwash, perfecting winemaking, we just know that now, it's perfect. Um, yeah, the militia ones, I haven't been worried too much about, because uh, with our mithril weapons and everything, we seem to just be wrecking everything. Okay. Um, trade lore, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's just leave that for now, okay. Lots of research. But let's take a quick look. Can make yeast. It's mainly going to be over here in our brewery. So let's take a quick look. All right. Well, looking at things, you know, between mulled wine, rum, and whiskey, they all restore things to slightly different levels. And but they're all pretty good. Um, beer does a flat uh, 500 restore morale. Doesn't require too many resources, not too difficult. The mulled wine requires wine, honey, and cinnamon, which actually we don't, um, we could probably get the research for honey. I've, I've never grabbed it, because, at least in this playthrough, because, eh, you just need it for a few things and, uh, not too big a deal. But, uh, it does restore health plus morale and a big boost of morale, so that's good. Oh, dust to dust completed. Very nice. Rum and whiskey, very similar. We can produce it with everything within the mountain, which is which is good. I like looking at that. It's also renewable resources. You know, things like killer wine restores a little bit lower morale, but requires killer plant berries. We've got a couple of those, I think, but I don't see us getting a ton of those. Anyways, all this to say, let's make some... Yeah, we don't really have... Yeah, just water. Just, uh... Oops. Let's maintain... I don't know. We've got... We've got 12 dwarves. Sure. Let's maintain 12 of each of these. There we go. So what do we need? We need yeast and mountain barley. And yeast and molasses. Okay. That should not be too difficult at all. So there's the mountain barley. Let's just set this up to 20. There we go. And we also needed... We need molasses. Where do we make molasses again? Is that over here? Yeah. Okay. And which we need the sugar beets for. Which we are making here. Let's just bump that up to 20 as well. Okay. So we got the mushrooms. We got the barley. We're now making the molasses. And let's just do the same thing there. Do 20 there. Okay. And, oop, what do we need? Yeah, we're still getting rid of the scaffolding. There, got the scaffolding. <laughs> okay, so we need... We need the yeast. That's right, they both require yeast. So... There we go. Yeast is just uh, mushrooms, eh? Yeah. I mean, making it of toncap mushrooms means that um, it means that we will just naturally produce more. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So that's fine. Okay, we'll just uh, let it let it go for whatever. But let's set up forty yeast. There we go. Very nice. Now we'll have some uh, lovely whiskey and rum 
to partake in. Well, just selling more pickaxes to these guys, but let's see. We've got, you know, we got a, a bunch of uh, trade lore. Uh, okay, so it doesn't do a full one. Respectful. Oh, the price has jumped. Good. Uh, probably should have held off selling them uh, this stuff before we did that. But uh, until after we did that, but okay. Um, I don't know. We can always get more. What can we bump this up to? Esteemed. And then... Oh, that's it. Okay. We can get up to Esteemed. And now we're... Yeah. I'd have to double check, uh, just uh, look back at the video to see how much uh, it really improved things. And buying... I don't know. We weren't really looking at that before, but... Okay. Well, that's good. That'll help with our uh, our plan to uh, make all sorts of money. Oh, we got stranded dwarves. Let's go see. Oh, okay, you guys. Um, we should be mining down to you. I'm not sure why they don't uh, climb up further, but uh, oh well. <laughs> you guys will be okay. We'll get to you once this gets. Uh, well, it's not. It's still in frame. I was going to say, once it gets a little bit deeper, maybe we should start thinking about extending the mine shaft, uh, the elevator shaft, I mean, down. You know, because it, it does take them a little while to walk down this entire ways. Maybe I should just put a priority on this to make sure the dwarves know that, hey, <laughs> can you rescue these guys? We're starting to get a little bit of a pile of dwarves down there. You know, what you, what you doing... You waiting to mine or something? You know what? Maybe what we should do... Yeah, maybe we need more builders. Builders and haulers. Alright, let's see. Who are some dwarves here? Builder 1, hauler... 11, okay, so maybe. Miner 7, hauler 4... Builder 10... Yep, I think that'll work. We'll hire you. And Gunver. Builder 19. Holler 8. Oh my goodness. Hire. <laughs> We've got spots for more dwarves. There you go. Let's just throw both of you guys up here. There you go. Welcome to the mountain home. Should probably just get a whole bunch more dwarves, but uh, we'll do that for now and get these guys set up. There we go. Just getting the rail set up. Might as well. Uh, don't have a rail station. Um, probably won't set one up now. There isn't anything here yet that I've kind of wanted to, you know, put a crossing in or put a stop in. Let's just keep going deeper and deeper. We've got a long ways to go to get down to the... Uh, fiery underworld. Well, we've got, uh, you know, sovereignty for 20 dwarves. Maybe what we should do, let's set up more dwellings and just, let's just do that now. Might as well. And that way, you know, we're ready when we want to recruit more. Um, and really, there's nothing stopping us from doing that now. Really. Um, once we build those, yeah, maybe let's just see who's who's recruitable. And, yeah, we still have... Okay, Homa, yeah. <laughs> you got two, the two center ones, and then dropped out. Now you can't reach those. And now we're going to need to do scaffolding to get to those. Sigh. Well, and same thing with over here. Probably won't be able to make it over there. Oh, wrong one. Yeah. This is why I like to do it slow and steady, because more likely to get it all as opposed to have to come back and, and do other things. You know what? Maybe just to try something different. Instead of doing scaffolding and then elevator, let's just try doing elevator straight down. I, I Like I said, I don't usually do this, and I think part of the problem is the dwarves can get themselves stuck a lot easier, because they can't, you know... By themselves go up and down the elevator rails. They gotta go up and down the uh, 
uh, the scaffolding. But, you know what? Let's just, it's good to try things every once in a while, do things a little differently, even if you know that maybe it won't work out too well. Maybe it won't be so hot. Nope. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, you guys should be able to climb up and then go across here. Uh, where are you guys getting attacked? Oh, okay. Well, that's different. Not sure what's over here that you guys would be attacked, but okay. Well, that's fine. We could probably use the uh, slime and everything. But uh, yeah, let's just let's just keep trying this experiment. Worst comes to worst, we'll just uh, drop some more scaffolding in beside it, and and off we go. Not really a big deal at all. All right, we've made some more dwellings, but I think we're gonna leave it here for now. We'll get that next time. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Catch you in the next one. Take care.